everyone in the service industry has a story, crazy customers, wild orders, and WTF moments. Do you want to start a tab? The podcast here to bring you those tales from behind the bar. My name is Carl. I have 11 years of bartending experience and have some stories to share with everyone. I'm Riley. I've been observing Carl's bartending career for the past eight years. Something like that. And I've witnessed some of those stories. So what we do here on this podcast is we read stories from the internet and give you our feedback on it. Was the guest, was the storyteller an asshole? And then we rate it on a scale of one to five. Was this an average story that you hear at the bar? Or was this a five where it's extraordinary, unique, or just what the fuck? Quick disclosure, we read these stories directly as written off Reddit or any other website. So if there's some grammar inaccuracies, tough bananas, you're going to hear them. Right. Okay. What do we got today, Riley? Um, my first story comes from a deleted user on the Am I the Asshole thread. I love, subreddit. I love the user deleted user. They write fantastic stories. They have a lot. It's so er- Oh, you know what we forgot to mention? What? What are we drinking? Coffee. Coffee. <laughs> it is 8.25 a.m. here in eastern Iowa. And you have to work in a little bit. Yep. And so you're just drinking coffee with some cream. Yep. I may or may not be drinking some coffee with some Irish whiskey in it. I'm drinking coffee with a hefty dose of cream, and it's fine. From a deleted user two years ago. Okay. It's called. It's from the Am I the Asshole subreddit. Okay. And it's called Am I the Asshole a Karen for reporting a bartender, a rude bartender to her manager. And for a quick up thing, disclosure, if you are not familiar with this subreddit, people put stories and then ask if they are the asshole or not. So basically exactly what we're doing in this podcast with people, it's all genres and all stories in this yeah, subreddit. Yeah, and that was definitely the, like, the motivation behind this podcast yeah, so because I love reading this is a great, Yeah, this is a great subreddit to read. I, 21 female, need to know if I'm in the wrong or not. My friends and I were at a casual restaurant slash bar, and there were a lot of people there, all at tables and masked up if they got up. So the restroom line was very long. My friend and I waited in line for, I kid you not, 30 minutes before finally going in. It's a one-room bathroom with one toilet, no stalls, etc. Just a room with a toilet and a sink. That seems not ideal. Anyway, we both went in. Yes, girls pee together sometimes. Haha, ha, especially when drinking. And we were there in there for probably exactly a minute before we hear banging on the door. I had just gotten undressed to pee. And since it was crowded outside because of the line, there were at least 10 girls and 10 men outside the door waiting in separate lines for the bathroom. And then we hear someone say, open the fucking door right now. Those exact words followed with more banging, which eventually turned into someone yanking the door so hard that my friend had to yank it shut or else it would have opened in front of everyone outside in the restaurant. And I was undressed. So I got dressed as fast as I could, did not even pee because I was afraid my friend wouldn't be able to hold the door closed any longer and I would be exposed to 20 people, 10 of them being men. We opened the door and said we had literally only been in here for one minute and had And to wait, but it was a female bartender who I had tipped earlier, which I now regret. And she said, I work here. I get to pee first. Get out. You can pee after me. She went into the bathroom and slammed the door shut. And my friend and I turned to the girl standing in line outside and we were like, what the fuck? And the girl went, she works here. She has to deal with my drunk ass so she can do whatever she wants. Deal with it. And I got mad and I started to say that I was a customer and no, you can't just kick customers out of the restroom. And the girl said, okay, bye, customer. And my friend and I just left to go to the bathroom on the other side of the restaurant. My question is, am I crazy for thinking what the bartender did was wrong? My friend and our friends back at the table thought so. But the girls in line said we were being disrespectful to her because she worked there. We did not say a single word to the bartender other than, can you please wait a second? The bartender fully tried to rip open the door and would have succeeded in opening it if not for my friend holding it shut. While I was exposed with my underwear literally around my ankles in front of multiple people. She also cussed at us when she said, open the fucking door. We went to the manager after we ate and told them, told him about it and pointed her out. Am I an asshole slash a Karen for doing this or is the bartender in the wrong? Thanks for any help. 
What did the manager say? You can't tell, say you went to the manager and then not say what happened. But no, you are absolutely in the right. Fuck that bartender. Right. Like you don't like you can maybe jump up to the front of the line. Right. And wait your next turn. But right. you don't get to like kick someone out. I mean, especially like if you haven't been waiting for longer than five minutes. Like. Right. I mean, there there are so many problems with this story. Like, why w- you stood in line for thirty minutes, but there's a restroom on the other side of the restaurant. Mm-hmm. So why don't you just go to that one? I'm assuming the line was just as long. Maybe. But like, why I don't know. It, uh, you, you were waiting for thirty minutes. <laughs> I would have sent my friend to scope out the other one and see if the line was shorter. That's true. But how packed is this fucking restaurant where it's during COVID? Obviously, because I know that's what you you had to check to see how long it was posted when people would mask up. So right. how packed is this place during the peak of the pandemic, you know, to where right. like you're still waiting 30 minutes. Right. And what kind of shit show is a restaurant providing that everyone and their mom is going to the bathroom all at the same time. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like if this is a restaurant. Yeah. Either Why? If this is a restaurant, why aren't there more restrooms? Right. Or why is everybody having to go to the restroom at the same time? I mean, but that's, I don't know. I don't know. I just, that seems really weird that it's that many people all going to the restroom at the same time. But it's also like 30, okay, if people are waiting 30 minutes and let's just say, so is there two restrooms on that one side or is it two lines and they're alternating men and guys? I don't know. So, don't. yeah, I don't know. I would just assume there's two restrooms, one for guys, one for girls. Because if there's two lines, that's usually what that means, right? Right. We've been in, we've been to bars where. I mean, they're probably. They're probably non-sex specified restrooms. Then you stand in line with boys. Like when we went to Raised by Wolves, I was standing in line with men and women. You just alternate. You know, you just whoever goes up. But like if it's too separate, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. How long are people taking? Like that's what I'm saying. Like how long are people taking to go to the bathroom? And there's that many people to wait 30 minutes. Like right. there must be 50 people in line to go to the bathroom. Right. And why are there that many people in line? That's and a, like why are why do the restroom facilities not? Or why does the restaurant not have enough to enough restrooms to handle their customer and their employees? Why do the why do the employees not have an employee bathroom? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, none of this is on the OP at all. This is just no. us questioning it. Right. Also, I've never worked at a restaurant. I've never even heard of a restaurant or bar saying that the bartender's just gonna skip up to the line. I mean, I understand if you're busy and you need to get back to the bar, people will be pissed if your bartender's waiting in line. Why is my drink taking so right. long? Blah, 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 blah. And like, if I was a bartender and I saw a line and I really had to pee and I had to get back to work, I'd be like, hey, I have to get back to work. Can I please just cut here and be right. next in line? I will be so fast. Yeah. And that would suffice. Right. I think. Uh, she absolutely, or OP absolutely was not the asshole because... Right. I'm a pretty mild tempered person, but if you're ripping the door open on me in the bathroom and telling me to get the fuck out, no, fuck you. I'm going to stand here and make everybody wait now Yep. because I have to pee. And if I can't pee, you can't pee. Right. You yeah. you can leave me alone until I pee. COVID during that time really fucked with people's entitlement and just, just general interactions with human beings altogether. Mm-hmm. Like it's like we pause that button of human interaction for a year. Or 18 months. And when we unpaused, it was just like the wild, wild west. Oh, my God. I get to speak to someone else that's not my fucking partner. Mm-hmm. And it was a shit show for a while. Or my kids. Or my kids. I I'm, I always wish they would put what country they lived in in these things. Because right. it'd, be, it'd be interesting to know. It seems like, for the most part, the, the way that people can sometimes talk and the way they use certain words, you can kind of pick up, you know, oh, they're from Australia or from the UK or right. they're from Europe. Seems like this is either Canada or the United States, just with how they speak and how they are writing. Is there any updates from the OP with this? Um, She said, yes, there were around three other bartenders working with her and so many customers. So I understand cutting in line definitely, but not trying to pull the door open while I was inside. Right, exactly. Um, The manager just listened, asked us to point her out and said that he would take care of it. He rolled his eyes at what we said, but not at us. At the bartender's actions as we were explaining what had happened and when he went back to work or and then he went back to work. But I would expect him to call her out slash talk to her about it during a busy work. I wouldn't expect him right. to, to call like her out during a busy work day since she had customers. I'm yeah. not sure what he's going to do. Man, so you're saying, yeah, see, this is also crazy. Two years ago, right? So that that's 2021. 
you know, the pandemic is still kind of like at its maybe maybe near the roll off period, but still you're at a bar that it's just crazy, right? Like it's and again, I'm not saying they're not allowed to go out and do their thing. I'm just saying three bartenders, packed bar, restaurant, and people are still just like getting back to right what decent human beings do. And she said somebody was like, You had to have been in the staff bathroom toilet or staff toilet because they're blah 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 blah. No. And she said, Nope, it's the full story. I was not it was not a staff bathroom. The line was all customers and there was no staff only sign on the door. Just a women's sign and a men's sign on the other one. Okay, so there's two. Yeah. And one of the waiters even told us where it was when we asked. Dude, when it says staff bathroom, it's is there a big ass sign that says employees only or staff. Most of the time if you're going to a staff bathroom, it's like in the back. In the kitchen. Right. You <laughs> like have to go the kitchen. Right. You have to go through places to get there. It's not just right, right. over the open. Wow. I mean, she got a resounding not the asshole, absolutely. which I absolutely agree. Um, the bartender can honestly go fuck herself. Right. Like I <laughs> there are very few things that are going to set me off, but that's gonna be one of them. Yeah. It's yeah. So um I rate that story a three point one. Okay. Because yeah, I mean, any human being trying to open up the other door because you think your bodily fluids have to come out sooner than someone else's and then being an employee where these people are paying you, they're tipping you, and you just feel you're obligated to do whatever the fuck you want. Right. So, 3-1 for me. Oh, man, this is hard. Because, like, people trying to rip open the bathroom door because they have to pee is not uncommon. But having it be having it be a bartender who gives no fucks about customer experience. Mm -hmm. But then, I mean, maybe she's been holding it for so long and she finally got a chance to get a break over there. But like still, you you cut in line. You don't rip open the door. Like who does that? Right. I don't know. So I'm going to give it a two point eight. Yeah. I have absolutely had the door ripped open on me while I was in the bathroom, uh, probably on multiple occasions. Really? Yeah. Or and like if you're in a if you're in a bar restroom that just has stalls, mm-hmm. people will rip those open if they have to pee. And women who have to pee who are hammered are exceptionally strong or capable of <laughs> pulling those things open. It's insane. That's funny. Um, That's crazy. But then again, I'm also the person who I wouldn't have gotten up. I'd have been like, no, I'm peeing. Right. <laughs> like, Come at me. Right. You want you want to I'm going, pee? You can wait for I'm, me. I'm going to punch you in the face and pee all over you at the same time because <laughs> I can't hold it. I was undressed. Men were going to see me. I understand as a 21 year old woman, like I right. absolutely would not have had the confidence to be like, no, fuck you. But like, absolutely now. Well, I mean, she said she had to get undressed, right? So she was wearing. I'm assuming she was wearing a romper or something, something that she had to like undo. Like if it was just like she was wearing like a sundress or something, just had to pull right. her underwear down. Some people might not give a shit, whatever. But again, I'm not saying that they should have done that or that you no, not absolutely or. Not. You you are allowed to feel uncomfortable in whatever situation you are. Absolutely. You know? But I'm just like some women, if it was just their panties down, pulled their ankles, who give might not give a shit. Right. But when she said I had to undress, so she had like you said she had to like right pull something off or do whatever. Right. I'm a, yeah. Because women it was in a your fucking crazy situation. outfits. Hey, it's not our fault. Blame the fashion industry. We don't like like we don't like it either. All I want mm. is pockets. Mm. Pockets. <laughs> I want pockets that don't fucking tear when I have my wine key in them. I don't want cloth pockets. It happens to me all the time. I want like, why is there, why is there not better pockets lined? Why is it always cloth? Stupid. What? The audacity on you. At least you have pockets. And it's a wine key. <laughs> it's going to rip your pockets. It's got sharp edges. And I know you don't shut it all the way sometimes. I, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I don't want cloth pockets. Make me a pocket that can sustain to a what wine key. What are they made out of, Kevlar? Whatever the fuck. I don't know. I'm not a fucking, Jesus I'm not Christ. a designer. I'm a bartender. I'm just telling you what I want. You figure it out. <laughs> Maybe you should figure it out because you're the one bitching. If you would like to ha- hear us banter and go at it on your bar story, <laughs> go to our subreddit, Do You Want to Start a Tab? Link is in the description of YouTube or whatever podcast platform you are using to listen this to we'd love to hear your story read it and talk about it and give you our feedback because it's fun and if you're listening to this podcast you probably have a story and i get it it might you might be super embarrassed it might be super sketchy but it's the internet you can put whatever username you want and you can delete that account immediately, <laughs> immediately after if you want to. <laughs> right 
<laughs> so yeah, just go ahead and do that. And also while you're doing that, you're scrolling through your podcast platform, give us a rating, a little five-star rating. If you feel our stories are fantastic, or if you feel Riley and I have voices made for podcasting, give us a little five. And if you don't enjoy it, give us a one, whatever, whatever's up to you. It's all good in the hood. All right. So moving forward, I have a story from Bartender Story. It's the only subreddit I look at, obviously. Riley actually spends some time and de- <laughs> dives deep into other subreddits. Because we're going to read the same story. at this. We almost read the same story today. <laughs> we, I've been sitting on that one for since we started this podcast. That was one of the first three stories I found. But The whole five weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> this fine. is uh, fine. I'm not better. 21 days ago. And it's from, is it Whittles888? And the name of it is bartender, bartender sitting at a bar, dot, dot, dot. Backstory. Female 34. I have been bartending half my life, full time for 11 years. I work at an upscale place. My kind of lady. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, I was on a second date at a nice restaurant whiskey bar with over 100 whiskey and scotch options. I had gotten done with work early and went to a bar near my job. We both like egg white cocktails. My date ordered a whiskey sour, and I got an old-fashioned. The second round, he wanted an amaretto sour, so I got the same. He isn't an American, and the bartender was having trouble with his accent in the loud bar, so I ordered and specified, Jesus. (laughs) We wanted egg white sours. The woman next to me started telling me how I better tip well because that's a bold move that I pulled asking for egg white. I explained that I'm a bartender. Also, the first sour order without the specification was made with an egg, so obviously it's standard and eggs are readily available. Otherwise, I ask about eggs. You can tell that this story was before the price of eggs went up. Yeah, I know. I was kind of thinking the same thing, too. I mean, they're still readily available. They're just... Expensive. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I ask about eggs and never expect a place to have them on hand or or go out of their way for it. I was told to stay in your lane and learn where I am before I order like that again. Um, bars are my lane. They're my whole highway. She alleged that she was a bartender too, but I'm inclined to not believe her as she wouldn't even look near my direction and wouldn't even say if she worked in the city or further away. She was obviously drunk and had her elbows across half my seat after that. So I was leaned in awfully close to my date. What the fuck? I've never been lectured before about a drink order that the bartender had no issue making. I wasn't asking for a tasting pour of 20 wines or giving a drop-by-drop recipe that had had never been made before. Luckily, she was closing out and left shortly after, so we had a good laugh at her expense. I thought she was joking at first and quickly had me question if she was going to try to fight me. Ha ha ha. Has anyone else experienced something so absurd while trying to enjoy a drink? <sighs> I always do that after every story. Because <sighs> it's like... I, it's like every story I just relate to because there's some right. 10 other stories that I've experienced. It's like, yep, right. this, is, this is a thing. I mean, I'll give, okay, first of all, the other customer is absolutely the asshole. Mm-hmm. Like, mind your business. As far as the way that people bitch about egg whites, mm-hmm. that was fairly, un- that was mild. At least she's not screaming at the top of her lungs. Oh my God, I can't believe you want an egg. Ugh. Right. But it's not her drink. It had not. She's not even with that. She's not even with the. She's not even with. Like I get it. Like ooh, an egg white. Like oh, an egg white. Like I get that part right. But like you telling someone a bartender or you telling someone like you better go out of your way to tip more to that bartender because they're going out of their way to make a drink. No, they're making a cocktail. Get out of here. Mind your business. Right. Also, it seemed. It said it was a good restaurant, a higher end restaurant. Right. They were using egg whites in their whiskey sours anyway. Mm-hmm. A plus B equals C. If I want, an, if I want a Jeffrey Morgan Dellers version of an amaretto sour, I can get one of those. No one said there'd be math on this podcast, <laughs> especially algebra. All right, <laughs> but yes, absolutely. Like when people just, it's just so stupid when people talk like out of their ass for no reason. Like. You better know where you're at before you start ordering drinks. Bitch, I'm at a place that would specifically have egg whites. I'm not at the dive drinks are bar. Drinks my whole highway. <laughs> I'm, not at St- I'm not at Steve's lounge where, you know, right. he's probably not going to have it. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> you touch my pepe. Jesus Christ. Um. Anyways, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just. And then I, to be here like this right. the whole time. Yeah. Just like. On my shit. Yeah. yeah. Ah, see, like if someone ever did that to me, 
I just looked at him like, you know what? I don't fucking care. You know, like, I, yeah. I'm just, I just so over people just butting in and saying shit that's like, who, why do you even speak to other people like that? Right. What What makes you think that that's okay? Like, who did, who, who didn't teach you to mind your business in kindergarten? Mm-hmm. And who didn't teach you the thumper principle? What's that? If you can't say nothing oh my nice. Oh, God. Don't say anything at all. Well, then I would never say anything. <laughs> no, if in the this situation. principle applies to this. Right. Like, I get it. She can, she can ask, like, oh, an egg white? Is that, like, you know, right. whatever? Right. Is that standard? But like... she obviously already knows it's a standard thing, and she just, she thinks it's, like, a super, it says she's, as if the guy's making a Ramos gin fizz. Right. Right. A cocktail that takes 12 plus minutes to make. Yeah. 12 minimum. Right. So. Yeah, no, I mean, she's definitely in the right. She handled it way better than I would, for sure. This reminds me kind of a time, bar backslash door guy, Brett. He has a bunch of tattoos. You know, some days he'll have his fingernails painted, whatnot, whatever. He's living his life perfect. He works, yeah. You know, and he does what he wants to do. You do you and right. whatever. I don't give a shit. I've painted my nails before. I mean, And back you got the- lots of people bitching about yeah, it. Yeah, well, I'm saying it happens to have- <laughs> People come like to me like, why did you get his fingernails painted? And they're asking me that. I'm like, who cares? Like, first I go, all, he's a grown man; he can do whatever he wants. First of all, why are you asking me? Right, not my business. Second of all, don't be an asshole. Right, I don't ask you why you're wearing some stupid fucking belt buckle. Right, that's fucking four inches by four inches. Right, you think that's normal? You like it? <laughs> Like wh- everyone thinks that what they do is perfectly fine, but everyone else, if it's not what the, they're into, it's, it's so. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying this doesn't happen to other cities. I just feel like this probably happens maybe a little bit more here in Iowa. When yeah. people, Because back in the day, I was the alternative kid. So we dyed our hair. We wore baggy jeans. And we were not your typical Iowan. So people questioned why we looked all the time. And it's just so, it's like, I've never had the audacity to go up to someone and bitch about something that they're doing or wearing. Unless it was like they were being violent or hurting another human. Like physically hurting someone right. else. But if they're just doing them... Okay. Am I, may I judge you in the inside of my head? Sure. But I'm not going to go up right. to you and say to you, why are you doing this? Right. It's my prerogative to have opinions. It is right. not my prerogative to tell you that my opinions are the way it has to be. All right. Someone left a comment. Um, over the last 20 years, I've listened to bar. I've listened to bartenders try to correct everything I've ever done. I put a CO2 gin fizz on the menu and people said it was rude because people would want them from other bars. I put a reverse Manhattan build on a menu, was told by another bartender that vermouth is gross and no one will drink it. People seem to think their opinion matters. Just do your thing and they can fuck right off. Literally. And then the OP responds, right? I honestly assumed she was being racist at first because of his accent and thought we weren't going to tip at all. I cannot imagine scrolling, scolding a random stranger at a bar for ordering a cocktail that bar, for ordering a cocktail that the bar makes frequently. She was looking for a fight. Yeah, I've had other people tell me why I do things certain ways. I'm like, it's just the way I do it. Like, I don't like what? Like, I, I sometimes they ask because they want to know, right? But then they're, I, then you can tell the tone and the way they say it. Like, they're questioning, why are you doing it this way? This is not the way I do it, or this is. It happens a lot because we're Wisconsin, Iowa. We we'll, there will be it, many the discussions. Old, the old fashioned debate will always be a thing, right? And uh, and it's just like, well, this is the way I do it, man. If you don't like it, okay, but right. I'm not going to cater. And if your idea of what this is supposed to be comes from Wisconsin, yeah. you're the one that's wrong. Well, yeah, not a, yeah, <laughs> you're right, exactly. But that, like this, he yeah, said, that no, reverse yeah. Manhattan vermouth gross. Like, well, you're not a bartender. Well, I mean, you okay? Never mind. I shouldn't say that because they're probably a bartender, like a dive bar that has one bottle of vermouth and it's been sitting out open for six months. Right. They don't refrigerate it. So that's why it's it, gross. Yeah. Well, and also, if you don't like vermouth, don't drink it. Right. Just don't drink that cocktail. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Bitches be everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> She probably thought your date was cute. <laughs> One thing you can always count she said, on drunk. She said he is pretty cute, to be honest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One thing you can always count on drunk people is to be is drunk. Yep. Any chance she's referred to the recent spike in egg prices. <laughs> <laughs> that would make more sense than her actual intentions. <laughs> so I don't know. I yeah. Uh, for this story, I'll probably just give it a one eight or two. I'll give the story two. Because, again, people would just say dumb shit out of their mouths after three or four drinks. And if it doesn't, if they think they're... Because she's probably thinking that she's being 
supportive to the bartender, trying to help that bartender out by like, you know what, I'm going to stick my nose in their business and say my thoughts and saying you should tip. Right. You know, like something like that. Right. So you said w- what? Two. A two. A two. A two, a two, a two. Honestly, 1.5. I have I've seen this interaction sitting at your bar yeah. on several occasions. I kind of, I'm one of those people where I kind of make it my job to like find the people who are, have the potential to be assholes yeah. and distract them. <laughs> so like I'll overhear the people muttering, rah, 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 and then I'll be like, hey guys, how's, well, how's it going? Can I sit here? What's <laughs> up? <laughs> so that's why you move seats for? A lot. Yeah. You know, you should let them be assholes and let me take care of them. No, I think it's funny to put them in their place, but oh. in a very nice way. Oh, some days you got to let me have my fun too. You get to have your phone all the time. Okay. Excuse you, that's mine. <laughs> One of our cats loves glasses of water for some reason. So, but yeah, that is our two stories for the day. So, what did we learn today? Mind your own fucking business. Literally. And wait your fucking turn. Right. Do the things you learned in kindergarten. All right. Be nice to other human beings. God damn it. <laughs> right. God. The, the more stories we read, the more I realize that like people as they get older, the older we get, the more we forget the things that we learned mm-hmm. in the kindergarten, like right. how to be nice to other people, how to wait our turn, how to mind our own business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's wild. Yep. So like I said earlier, if you want to share your stories, follow us or uh, go to our subreddit, a subreddit. Do you want to start a tab? We have all the social medias, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, this is going to be on YouTube. Yep and share your stories we want to hear what other people's thoughts on some of these stories are because it's uh you know there's other bartenders other people in the hospitality industry that do listen to this so maybe we screwed up right and you want to correct us perfectly fine i'm i'm a bartender i don't have a soul i don't care like <laughs> i mean i care but like i'm not going to sit and dwell like oh susan in texas doesn't feel things think i'm doing this right, right. <laughs> but uh <laughs> Yeah. Also go to check out our Patreon for three bucks a month. You get extra content where we're interviewing our guests. We're going to start putting our own content on there. Learn more about Riley and me. And the day that we fell in love. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Just kidding. It's gross. <laughs> but always remember, don't be a dick. Tip your bartenders and drink responsible. responsibly. Responsibly. <laughs>